Hello and welcome. I'm Nate for 2 and in this episode I'm going to be doing a review and comparison of the TiVo Tarantula. Okay, so just so you know, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I have had the printer, this one right here behind me, uh, sent to me from uh, Gearbest. I was not paid to make this review and I will be giving my complete honest opinion on the product. Okay, so we start off with the test prints. The test prints I have behind me here, we had before the test cube. I thought the test cube came out quite nicely. Um, yeah, the top layer was quite nice and flat. The side walls were pretty nice and flat. I mean, there was a little bit of maybe a slight jagger, uh, a slight um, judder, sorry, in the edge walls on certain parts, but it wasn't anything too bad. So yeah, I was quite happy with how the little cube came. And I, I think I showed uh, this previously in the last video as well. Okay, exhibit B, we have Marvin. Now, obviously Marvins are quite infamous for being printed as test prints. Uh, now, the thing that I always try to look out for on Marvins is how clear the hook at the top was. And considering that I didn't have a fan pointing at the model while it was printing, the hoop at the top came out very well. I'm quite surprised. Uh, the other thing that I noticed in other printers, which I didn't notice in this one, was in the eyes. Usually you get a little bit of droop um, on the bits that are going up above the eyes. In this one, uh, we don't really have that. We do have a strange line around this one, uh, around the eye area. That seems to just be on this model, not this one as well. So, yeah, all in all, that came out quite nice. I think this came out really well. Okay, next up, the test print that we have is this Lattice Q, which I believe uh, was first created or coined by uh, Maker's Muse. Really cool, really good. I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking for when it comes to these kind of prints, but there's not too much string in, and for just kind of putting the printer together, exporting the file, and then printing this model directly, I'm quite happy with the quality that it actually printed out. It has actually created a nice solid structure, so... Yeah, it can withhold quite a bit of strength on it as well, which is pretty good. And then finally what I have here is the Control V Test Ring, uh, which is version 3 of the Control V Test for printers. Uh, now, as you can see on here, there's lots of really cool little tests around the outside of this big ring. Uh, or hexagon or whatever I call it. The only real issue that we have on this one is the string in here, um, but it kind of feels like uh, maybe something got stuck to the end of the tip and was dragged. So I'm not sure if uh, the string in was entirely the fault of the printer or not, but I mean, pretty much everything else printed perfectly. Overall, I'm quite happy with how that came out. I think it's probably the best that it's come out on any of my printers before. So yeah, that's always good. Overall, with all of these different prints that I've put out, um, and also I did a Helix Fossil as well. They all came out really well. This came out really good as well. Uh, maybe very slight juttery look on the on the edges, but other than that, it, it, looks, it looks pretty good. It all looks pretty good. Next up, I'll talk about some pros, some cons, and a comparison. So start with the pros. It comes upgraded as standard, which is pretty cool for a printer. Um, but in, what I mean in that sense is when you buy the A8, you get the printer, you don't really get um, the underbed uh, installation, you don't get the Creozone uh, sheet that I've put onto it now, you don't get a fan on the uh, power supply, you don't get an operated power supply at that either, you don't get the Belden extruder, you know, all these things are things that you kind of buy on top of it. Uh, and with the Tiva Trancher, they all come as standard, which is quite incredible, really. The other big difference is the metal frame. So it comes with a metal frame as standard uh, on the Tiva Trancher, and that's pretty good. Especially for a printer that's not even that much more expensive than the A8 was when I first purchased it. Another pro is you get to put it together. It's always fun learning a new hobby. With putting a printer together, you can learn parts of that hobby inside out so you understand different bits around it i quite enjoy putting printers together in the whole <laughs> sometimes not so much when the instructions aren't so great and that is a con um but i'll talk about that later um 
But yeah, overall, it was a very nice experience of putting it together. You know, there's a lot of different places on here which I could look to upgrade myself with itself. So such as maybe a box for the wires, uh, some better places to for cable management, some things you could print uh, along that line if you really wanted to. Uh, and maybe some, like just neatening it all up and making it a nice, good package that you can... Uh, that you can stick on your desk nicely. And a third pro is it actually does have very high quality prints. The prints that I've got out of it so far, they have been very good. And now let's talk about the con. So far, I've been unable to get the heat bed working. Uh, I don't know why. I'm gonna look in, I haven't fully looked into it to be honest because I already had the time and it still does print perfectly fine to PLA without the print bed being heated up, which is fine, which is good, you know, um, but yeah. At the moment, it's not a big deal, like, I don't really care too much, so, yeah. But when it does come to me printing things with a heated print bed, I may need to look into that a bit further and potentially cut some wires or replace the print bed or something like that, I'm not sure. The second con is something happened to my fan. Now, take these first two cons with a pinch of salt because when you get the printer through, these might not happen to you. They probably won't happen to you. It's probably just a bit of an issue with the printer that got sent through to me. I can imagine they're very thoroughly tested before sent out and stuff like that. But in my case, the, the fan did fail on the extruder. And that's why I've got a different fan strapped to the front of it, as you can see. But, you know, it does the job. It does work still. Um, and once I... I don't know. I, it might have just blown when I attached it to the power supply. I don't actually know. But we'll... I'm gonna try, I'm gonna buy a new fan for that eventually and we can fix that anyway. So it's not a huge issue. Uh, it's just a, an issue that's a bit of an inconvenience to me, to be honest. Um, but it's okay, we'll get it, we'll get it sorted out at, at some point. The third con is the instruction manual. <laughs> now, instruction manuals are usually quite awful, uh, especially from like maybe Chinese manufacturer printers. This one came out very nice. It's very nice. Uh, publication it's on a4 big book um, it has the step by steps all in there but then you get like a couple of steps through and you realize that things just don't seem right uh, and maybe where you'd expect there to be uh, the, the part list and like all the different bits like that for the part that you're putting together at that exact uh, moment it seems to be another picture of something else completely random from the book. I did talk about this very slightly in my last video. If you want to learn more about that, go back and have a look at that video because I show you the book and I show you the issues in there with that one. But yeah, it just some, some parts of it are out of place um, and also it's very hard to uh, decide the orientation of the printer. So I wasn't sure, do you have the, the two uh, metal frame bits pointing forwards or do you have them pointing backwards? I didn't find out until later on in the in the build, and that was a bit um, that was a bit awkward to really find out and and work out and things like that. If you're going along this uh, path of creating this with someone else, or with a video that you're watching online, it's not so bad. It can be done fairly easily and fairly stress-free. But I didn't do that because you know <laughs> I'm a bit of an idiot when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to power through and try and put it all together my way and instead I ended up very stressed and you know I had to end up going over to my computer and, and looking at videos on how to put the thing together but it was worth it guys don't think that I'm saying that badly it was definitely worth it now I'm going to give a quick comparison between the two printers the a the Aina A8 and the TiVo Tarantula now the TiVo Tarantula does have some questionable things as well like the screen up here I, mean, I suppose this could be another con maybe it doesn't actually it's not actually supposed to be there, so yeah, it's a bit strange. Like it doesn't really come with any mounting stuff for up there. What would be good to see is, which I suppose you could make in the community, is some way to mount that on top of the frame up here, um, and then you just use that as a way to put put the screen, and then it'd be out of the way of everything else as well. So it's, it's not going to be in the way of any like printing or anything like that. The wire management on here is a lot worse off than on here, but this printer here did have some very good 3D printable parts from the community which we 3D printed. Otherwise it would look probably the exact same as this. And part of this is actually just the, the plastic, so 
if, you, if, it, if it looks worse than it looks worse than it is because there's a lot of plastic there um, but it does it does look fine without that it comes with a fan to cool that all down which is quite good uh, this one didn't come with a fan for that I added a fan onto the power supply for this one the power supply for this one was less powerful than the power supply for this one as standard this one didn't come with the Bowden extruder this one did as standard come with the Bowden extruder this one came with the old style screen and buttons this one came with a new style screen and a uh, control knob and potentially button as well. I think this one came with one wheel of plastic, this came with two smaller wheels of plastic. This one came with a good heat bed and a good solid undercarriage. This one came with a good, well, an incredibly good heat bed, hopefully, when, it, when I get it working. Um, and the undercarriage is made out of acrylic. I don't get that. I, don't, I really don't get that whatsoever. It's not great to have the undercarriage made of acrylic. The frame on this is metal, the frame on this is acrylic. There's quite a, a difference uh, you'll notice when you're trying to shake this about and it does actually shake about and then you try and shake this about and you're actually moving the whole printer along. along. You, you can't shake it and it can't, it can't tilt in that kind of sense. Very solid printer, I'll have to give them that. That is a, is a very good solid printer. Um, and the wheels on this one make it very slightly quieter than that. So, if you could hear any of that whatsoever, this one's slightly quieter than that one when it comes to moving. The motors are exact same, so you can still hear the motors over that anyway. So it's just, yeah, it's a bit, it's kind of swings and roundabouts with the both of them. But one thing that I will need to give the TV Tarantula is the fact that it came with all these upgrades out of the box. This one, it didn't come with the Career Zone sheet, I bought that myself. It didn't come with the Bowden extruder. I bought that myself. It didn't come with the mount up here to hold the motor for the Bowden extruder. I bought that myself. It didn't come with an upgraded uh, power supply. It didn't come with uh, meshing underneath here just to like keep it warm for longer or to help it heat up. I think that the Aina A8 is a very good printer and I'd never take it away from being what well, probably, I had the, the printer before that, the, the V3, the Vector 3. It is down here, it is going to be touched again at some point soon. I will um, bring it up to date and make it very nice. I won't put bounds on it because that's just pointless for me. But yeah, I'm, I will bring it up to date and make it work better. This printer, I think, is a very, very good beginner printer. It comes with uh, a very good community behind it. A lot of people that can help you out and it's a very good printer. It does print very good prints. And it's a very big build surface, so you can print some pretty sizable prints with that as well. But after you've learned how to like level the bed, you know, put it all together, settings and stuff like that. And there is also a very good community behind that. This TiVo Tarantula, I haven't really looked too much for a community on this just yet. But I've heard that there are some pretty good communities on it. Not as large as the Aina A8, but they are getting bigger and they are expanding quite well. It comes with all the bells and whistles anyway. Uh, and it's only, it's not much more in price than this one. It would definitely be a lot more expensive to buy this one and then do all the upgrades that you get for this one. I think that it would be worth getting this printer and then <laughs> maybe taking the dive into the pit to learn how to use that printer instead of buying the Aina A8 and learning how to build that printer and then realizing at the end that you want a little bit more for you, for what you've for what you've got now as far as I know this printer doesn't have any issues with uh, heat beds uh, melting or you know house fires or anything like that it does have some uh, protective things on the board down here that you can see which I'm guessing are to protect from high voltage melts and stuff like that on the board um, I don't know I don't know if that is the case or not I'm just saying that that's from from my observation it seems like that is the case this one I did have to buy extra things uh, to guarantee my safety. Not that it probably would have mattered too much. I don't think it probably would have caught a house, caused a house fire. I don't think it probably would have caused a house fire with just printing PLA, which is what I do most of the time anyway. But, you know, you got to be on the safe side of when, when these things come to light and you, you always do want to be on the safe side of that. So yeah, when, when comparing the two, I would say that the Tarantula is probably very slightly better than the Aina A8 and the, the the pros 
for the A98 is the community behind it. You know, I've had a lot of help from the community in order to help me get to where I am so far, as opposed to the tarantula, which I've had no help with from the community whatsoever. I've just kind of worked it out as I got along and watched a few videos on YouTube. But as I said, it does come with all the extra bells and whistles, and that is usually what you'd want to get next down the line when you can. That about does it for this video. Don't forget to press subscribe. It's going to be a long one, so I'm sorry. Uh, it probably has been quite a long video. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree. Follow me on Twitter, that's at Nathan42, and thanks for watching.